السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه Dear brothers and sisters, um, the talk for this morning is going to be different from the series that we've been doing throughout the month of Ramadan. And um, I thought that instead of uh, continuing that series, since today there will be a solar eclipse, that maybe I should talk about some aspects related to the eclipse prayer. Uh, so inshallah, I will be speaking about the fiqh of the eclipse prayer. <clears throat> uh, before I begin talking about it, just a reminder that inshallah in our masjid we will be performing Salatul Khusuf, the eclipse prayer, today at 1.30 p.m. inshallah. <clears throat> <clears throat> the solar eclipse prayer is called in Arabic Salatul Khusuf or the Khusuf prayer. And the ruling about this prayer is that it is sunnah mu'akkada. This is an emphasized sunnah prayer. And there is a hadith that is related by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim in their sahih collections, according to which the Prophet ﷺ, uh, while he was in Medina, one year, there was a solar eclipse. So the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna shamsa wal qamara ayatan min ayatillah," that the sun and the moon are two of the signs of Allah. لا ينكسفان لموت أحد ولا لحياته. They do not become eclipsed due to the death of anyone, nor the birth of anyone. And he made that remark because people were saying that the sun had been eclipsed because of the death of the Prophet's son, Ibrahim, uh, because he had just passed away. So because people were saying that, he made this remark that the, the sun and the moon do not become eclipsed due to the death or life of anyone. So he continued and said that if you see either of them happening, meaning a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse happening, then you should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should perform salah until hatta yanjali, until the eclipse is over. And it is also related that in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself did perform salah upon the eclipse of the sun. Now, what exactly is the time when the eclipse prayer is supposed to be performed? Uh, the answer is that the Prophet ﷺ said that when you see them, then make dua to Allah and pray until the eclipse is over. And therefore, the time duration during which it is recommended to perform Salatul Qusuf is from the time when the eclipse appears, from the time when the eclipse appears until the time when the sun appears again or the eclipse is over. And um, the wisdom behind performing the eclipse prayer is basically to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return to us the ni'mah of bright sunlight, the ni'mah of sunlight. So when sunlight is back, then the objective is achieved, and then the prayer time ends. So this is what the ulama have said regarding the time of the kusuf prayer. Now, a question arises, and that is, that we know that there are certain times during the day when prayer is prohibited, right? And among those times is the zawal time. So zawal time is the time right before dhuhr, when the sun is at its zenith in the sky. Right before dhuhr time, that's called the time of istiwa or 
more commonly known as the Zawal time. That is one of the times when prayer is not allowed. So the question is that, is the eclipse prayer allowed during that time? And if you notice, Zohar time today enters when? 129. So that means that Zawal time is right before that. You see? So usually the ulama, they say about 10 minutes before Zohar time, that is the time when you should not pray when prayer is prohibited. So that would mean roughly from 119 to 129 is that prohibited time. So now the question is that, is the eclipse prayer an exception? Or is that also prohibited during that time? And this is a matter of ikhtilaf amongst the fuqaha, the view of the Hanafi school, and also the um, the predominant position of the Hanbali school, and also one opinion of Imam Malik is that the eclipse prayer is also prohibited during this time. Just like the rest of the prayers, this is also, this is no different. And therefore, if the eclipse happens during that time, then salah is not to be performed, rather one simply does Tasbih and Tahleel and Istighfar. As for the other view, it is the view of the Shafi'i school and the other opinion of Imam Malik and one opinion in the school of Imam Ahmad, according to which they say that this, time, this is a time when the solar eclipse may also be performed. So the solar eclipse may be performed during this time. So what we are doing is we are following the course of caution, right? So we are staying on the safe side and we are not going to pray during the Zawal time because of the opinion that prohibits that. That is the reason why we are not praying at 1 o'clock or 1.15. We are praying after 1.29. That's why we're praying at 1.30. But, just so that you know that there is another opinion, which is the official position of the Shafi'i school and the other uh, opinions that I mentioned, according to which there's nothing wrong with praying the Kusuf prayer during Zawal time, okay? And some of the other masajid will be doing that in the area. Now, the next issue is, <clears throat> what, is the, what are some recommended things to do in the eclipse prayer. There are a few things that are recommended. Number one, to perform ghusl before coming to the eclipse prayer. Because it is a prayer that is done in congregation, preferably. And therefore, just like other congregational prayers like Eid and Juma, it is recommended to perform ghusl before coming to the eclipse prayer. That's number one. Number two, it is recommended to perform it in the masjid. And that's why we'll be performing it inside the masjid. I thought about performing it outside, by the way, so we could get the experience of the eclipse. But uh, since it's recommended to perform it inside and also because of logistical difficulties of doing it outside, we're going to do it inside the masjid, inshallah. But I have asked these blinds to be opened. Inshallah, hopefully uh, they will... Uh, listen to my request. <clears throat> the next uh, thing that is recommended is <coughs> there is no adhan for this salah. There is no adhan for this salah. But it is recommended for the mu'adhin to say a salatu jami'ah or a salata jami'ah, which means salah is beginning or a congregational prayer is now about to begin. And that is because the Prophet ﷺ had instructed the companions to, to make that call to gather people for uh, Salatul Kusuf. There is no Adhan and there is no Iqama for this prayer. Also what is recommended is to uh, do a lot of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the eclipse, a lot of dhikr 
a lot of istighfar, a lot of takbir, sadaqa, um, and uh, just things that you normally do to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, we're still uh, behind our 500,000 goal for uh, Gaza. So yesterday we had announced that um, we are $70,000 short of our $500,000 goal. Um, I believe we are now, let's see, we are $28,000 short. So uh, this is a reminder, inshallah, it's a good time to also give sadaqah, uh, especially for the, uh, for, the, for the help of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Uh, it is also recommended to perform this salah in jama'ah, which means it's not required to perform it in jama'ah. So if you're not able to perform it in jama'ah or you really, really want to see the total eclipse and we'll be praying through that eclipse, so you can perform the eclipse on your own, eclipse prayer on your own. You don't have to perform it in jama'ah, but it is recommended to perform it in jama'ah. Now, a couple of other things, inshallah. <clears throat> One is that is there supposed to be a khutbah after this prayer? And this is also a debated issue amongst the fuqaha. The majority view, which is the view of Imam Abu Hanifa, and Imam Malik and Imam Ahmad is that there is no khutbah after Salatul Kusuf. However, the view of the Shafi'i school is that there is a khutbah that is recommended after the Kusuf prayer. In fact, it's supposed to be two khutbahs, just like the two khutbahs of Eid. Uh, we will follow the majority position on this we will not have a khutbah after the eclipse prayer today, inshallah ta'ala. Um, the next issue uh, is two more, inshallah, two more issues and then we'll be done. The next issue is how exactly is the prayer performed? And there are also two views about this. There's a majority view and there is a minority view. So. Uh, there is, first of all, no difference of opinion that it is two rakah. It is two rakah. But how are these two rakahs supposed to be performed? The view of the majority, which is the view of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad, is that this is an unusual kind of two rakah. Very unusual method in which this is performed. Because these are two rakahs that are like four rakah, but they're not four rakah, they're two rakah. How so? Because every rakah has two ruku and two sujood. Every rakah has two ruku and two sujood. So the majority view here is that, um, and this is the way we are going to perform it. So uh, you need to pay attention to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the prayer. And we're going to start, as usual, we'll recite the Fatiha and recite the Surah. And then we'll go into Ruku'ah. And then normal Tasbihat of Ruku'ah. Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah. Rabbana lakal hamd. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi if you want to add. And then we start the Fatiha again. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Right? If you're Shafi'i, you say A'udhu billahi. If you're not Shafi'i, you don't say A'udhu billahi. Anyway. Surah Al Fatiha, and then another Surah, and then another Ruku'ah, and then you stand up, and then normal Sajda once, sitting between the Sajda, second Sajda, stand up now for the second Raka'ah. The second Raka'ah is performed just like the first Raka'ah, with two Ruku'ahs, and every two Ruku'ahs and two Qiyams, and every Qiyam has Surah Al Fatiha and a portion of the Qur'an that is recited. So this is the recommended way, not the required way, the recommended way according to the three schools of thought. The schools of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad. And this is the way we're going to do it in our masjid today. The other view... <clears throat> excuse me. 
The other view is the view of the Ahnaf. The Hanafi school says that these are supposed to be two rakahs, just like normal two rakahs. There is no extra uh, ruku and extra qiyam. It's just like other two rakah that are performed uh, in nafil prayer. The last issue is, is this prayer supposed to be performed out loud or silently? And here also there are two opinions. One opinion is that this prayer is performed out loud just like the lunar eclipse prayer is performed out loud. So there's no difference of opinion about the lunar eclipse prayer that is performed out loud. But solar eclipse prayer, one opinion is that it is performed out loud just like the lunar eclipse prayer. And this is the view. <clears throat> I should have mentioned the other position first. Anyways, this is the view of Imam Ahmed and Qadi Abu Yusuf. This is the view of Imam Ahmad and his entire school, the Hanbali school, and Abu Yusuf, who is one of the three primary students of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala. And this is also one of the opinions of Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala. The other view is that the solar eclipse prayer is different from the lunar eclipse prayer. It is to be performed silently. So when we pray in congregation, the imam leads the prayer like, like he's leading dhuhr, for example, silently. Everybody, uh, the imam recites silently. And this is the view of Imam Abu Hanifa and the Maliki school and the Shafi'i school. Maliki school and the Shafi'i school. Now, what are we going to do? I'll tell you in a minute, but I, what I forgot to mention, what I forgot to mention is that the other thing that is recommended in the prayer is to make it long. So the Prophet ﷺ made the prayer very long, very long. The prayer lasted for the entire duration of the eclipse, okay? So we are not going to make it that long. Uh, we will keep it short, insha'Allah ta'ala. But we will pray out loud. We will pray out loud. So the plan is, insha'Allah ta'ala, to pray for about 20 minutes uh, so that we can pray dhuhr on time. Dhuhr is at 2 o'clock, right? So following the view of the Hanbali school and Qadi Abu Yusuf, we will pray out loud, inshallah ta'ala, and following the uh, opinion that is the majority opinion, we will perform two ruku in each rakah, two ruku and two qiyam. But we will pray after the zawal time to be on the safe side so that we don't pray during the prohibited time, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If you have any questions, please you can talk to me uh, privately. I don't want to keep the people waiting. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.